When you're writing code for computer games, optimizing the said code should be one of your most important goals as a developer. Optimizing the said code will directly affect the overall performance of your game, and as the project grows in size, it becomes ever more difficult to manage. The implications of unoptimized code can cause many issues. This includes the delay to the overall release of a project, legibility problems when other developers try to interpret the said code, and most importantly, hidden bugs and potential memory leaks that can occur as a result of poor optimization. In this tutorial, I want to cover some of the techniques that you can use in your GameMaker Studio 2 projects to not only increase the performance and optimization of your game, but also to improve the overall experience that players have when they play your game. So let's get started. So in this project, I've just got a simple object and a simple room. The object is simply just a 32 by 32 white sprite. Um, and essentially I've got a couple of variables, the angle and the distance. Uh, and then basically when I, in the step event, if I press the space key down and hold it, it's gonna move the position of the object relative to the location of the mouse from its current position. So if I just press and hold the space key now, you'll notice um, if I just hold the space key, the object is always going to move towards the mouse on the screen, like so. But right now, I'm using the length the x and the length the y functions. Now, it's going to be a bit strange of me to mention this, but this is actually doing things in the background purely mathematical that, like, many people initially don't get to grips with. And, to be honest, it's quite simple. If I were to type, uh, let's just comment this out, and then if I do x equals d cos, open bracket, and then the degree angle, which is obviously angle, like so, multiply that by the distance. Right, and then if I copy that and then paste this again and change this to y, and now this is negative d sin of angle multiplied by the distance. This should behave the exact same way as the previous code. And while you look at that, the object moves in the same direction towards the mouse like perpetual and if I move the mouse it changes the direction of the object. So why is this code exactly the same as this, right? Well, I believe YoYo -Yo Games has implemented these functions to essentially lower the bar for people who have a reduced mathematical understanding of the concepts. But there is an advantage to using this technique, okay? And essentially it relies in the fact that these operations are actually doing subtle things in the background which the raw maths you're doing instantaneously. So I'm just gonna skip to a short little presentation that I prepared for this video and I wanna explain the differences between these two functions. So yeah, prepare yourself for this. So as it stands, in most video games, generally when you take an object, you want to move that object from point A to point B. The distance and the direction between these two points both comprise something that we call a vector. We can simply call this vector between these two points AB, being as we're weaving point A and then travelling towards point B. If you begin to break down a vector, you'll notice that it has a horizontal and a vertical component. We could call the horizontal component between the two points delta x. The delta symbol is simply a Greek symbol that's used in mathematical notation to represent change. Using the same respects, we can call the vertical component delta y. And finally, we can call the distance of the vector between the two points l, the length. 
We can also symbolize the direction from the horizontal as angle theta. Theta is simply just the Greek symbol, but it's mostly used in mathematical notation to represent angles. Now to calculate the horizontal and the vertical component, we can use a simple mathematical technique known as Sokotoa. This technique only applies to right angle triangles, and it is important that I stress that. Now, right angle triangles comprise of three sides, that being the hypotenuse, which is always the most longest side, the adjacent, which is always touching the appropriate angle that you're calculating for, and the opposite, which is directly opposite of the angle that you're calculating for. So how can you actually use all of this information to move your object from point A to point B? Well, Sokotoa is simply just a tool that you can use to remember the trigonometric functions to allow you to calculate just that. So is just an abbreviation for sine of angle equals the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Cosine of angle equals the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And the tangent of the angle is equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent. The reality of the situation is that now we've got all the information we need to actually calculate that horizontal and the vertical component, all we simply need to do is rearrange these equations. To calculate the horizontal component, for example, all we simply need to do is multiply the cosine of the angle by the hypotenuse. To calculate the vertical component, we simply take the sine of the angle and multiply that by the hypotenuse. Do also take into account that GameMaker inverts the y-axis, so to fix that, you simply need to take the negative sign of the angle and then multiply that by the hypotenuse. One final thing to note here is that trigonometry functions in maths generally deal with radians and not degrees. 2 pi radians equates to 360 degrees. However, GameMaker actually implements functionality by default to allow you to input degree values in your arguments. These are the dcos and dsin functions, respectively. So yeah, back to the main crucial point. Obviously, if you supply the raw maths required to do these operations, that raw maths is actually going to be slightly faster than actually using these functions that are provided by GameMaker. Um, I've actually created a program that tests the amount of time it takes to perform these functions, and here's a little bit of a graph compared like, with all the different function operations. Um, I essentially did 1000 tests of that function, and I used the getTimer function to return the current time of the program since it started in microseconds, and then I essentially did the operation, and then took the new time, subtract the initial start time to give me the change in time that it actually took to do that function. I repeated that process a thousand times for every function, and that gives you a pretty rock solid average of how long these functions take to perform. So, the only instance where I noticed something peculiar was d arctan 2, right? So point direction is actually partially faster than d arctan 2, uh, and this is when I'm using the yo-yo compiler, bearing in mind. Uh, so the yo-yo compiler generally tends to be faster over the virtual machine. Um, I believe that the d arctan 2 function is partially slower because it's actually checking for if the x value is 0 and then if it is, it's not performing the operation because obviously when you try to divide by zero, um, it yeah, the answer is undefined. So there's obviously got to be a check in there somewhere to prevent the function from performing that operation and then ultimately breaking your game. So that's the only instance where um, I've found the raw math to be slower than the provided functions that GameMaker gives you. To sum all of this up, um, yeah, I hope all of this information helps you at some point in the future. 
maybe when you're writing the code, like you code in your games from now, why like, just maybe get the hint to just stop and think about is this actually the most efficient way that I'm I could possibly be writing this, you know? Because if you've got hundreds of instances of AI, for example, and they're all performing this mathematical like code and heavy operations, even those minute microseconds they do add up quite a lot. And ultimately, like if you can reduce the amount of time that it takes on the CPU to perform these operations, you're ultimately gonna allow yourself more headroom to add potentially more instances or even further increase the FPS or better yet like the performance so I hope you've enjoy enjoyed this video um, if you did enjoy this video please don't forget to leave some comments in the description if you get stuck on anything like the video if you did enjoy it dislike it if you did not enjoy it and subscribe if you're not already so uh, thanks for watching everybody